Now, you have many jobs currently. You're not the head of the central bank in uh, England anymore or Canada, but among other things, you're the special, I guess, advisor to the, the UN. Special on, envoy. Special envoy, yeah. UN on climate change. Is that right? That's correct, on climate action and finance. All right, so what, is, what does that really mean? What are you doing? You're telling the people in each country they should uh, you know, go more electric or don't burn as much oil or what? It's really about, so a lot of, if there's a common theme to my career, um, it's working at the intersection of public policy and private markets. So a lot of that in central banking, that's what you're doing. Um, and that's what I'm doing is this special envoy. And really it's to organize the private financial system to uh, be ready for climate change, not just the physical impacts of climate change, but to be part of the solution, to be able to provide capital, get capital to where it's needed to, uh, to right. get emissions. So down. in this, this position, uh, which I assume is a, probably an unpaid position. Very much so. But if you have an oil and gas investment that comes to an investment committee and you're the special envoy, do you have to recuse yourself or how do you? No, well, we have a very, uh, we have very clear uh, approach at Brookfield. As I say, we're one of the largest uh, renewable energy uh, providers, uh, and we are systematically going through our uh, assets uh, to ensure that as much as possible they have business plans that are consistent with the transition uh, towards net zero. Um, and, uh, and we do that, uh, first and foremost, from a fiduciary per, uh, perspective. We, we see uh, being low carbon or lowering your carbon footprint, to put it that way, as one of the fundamental uh, drivers of value in the market. And uh, I have to say, you know, we're being proven right. This is the main thing with climate. We don't have a lot of time. So uh, we know we're at 1.1 degrees already, uh, just about just bumping up against 1.2. Uh, and in fact, probably with uh, El Nino, we're going to hit one and a half, at least temporarily, with the amplifying effect, first point. Second point, we know in real time that the mapping of the temperature increase to the extreme weather events is worse than we thought 10 years ago. So actually the goal, even though the goal is getting tougher to get, it's becoming more important to get there. And the third thing we know is the mapping. You can map specific actions to specific emission reductions and it can become very clear whether you're making a difference on that. And what we've seen, I'll make two points if I may on that. One is, if we go back five years ago, Clean energy investment, so that's wind, solar, um, uh, uh, battery storage, and let's say EV charging, those types of things. About 500 billion worldwide dollars spent. This year, last year 1.2 trillion, this year 1.8 trillion. Okay, that is one and a half, 1.6 times what we're spending on conventional uh, energy investment. And that's starting to move, you know, so you can see in real time what's happening in terms of emission reduction, solution emission reduction. And as well, you know, from a financial, we're at Bloomberg, uh, you know, uh, and, and talking a bit about Brookfield as well. Um, from a financial perspective, first off, the numbers are huge in terms of the, you know, it, the, the action is in the clean, not in the conventional. Secondly, the information set around whether or not a company, doesn't matter what the industry is, could be tech, could be motors, you know, motors, whatever, services. Uh, the information about what your carbon footprint is today and where it's going is exploding so you can tell who's part of the solution, who's part of the problem, 